All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Sistis, and I'm here with the Arm Hug Podcast, and I have a special guest today. Her name is Elizabeth. She's the founder of Impact Diagnostics Lab and Health Services, and we all know her as Coach Ellie. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about drug testing businesses and how she started and what inspired her to go on this route and start her own business and then a coaching business. So can you get us started, Elizabeth, on how and why you got started? Thank you so much. It's nice to have you guys. Hello. So yeah, as um, Anastasia mentioned, my name is Elizabeth. So how I started my business is that I've always been a go-getter. I've always wanted to be independent and have something called my own. So that led me and inspired me into starting a new business. As a healthcare, my background is in healthcare. Um, I'm, I have um, my background is in public health, and I also have a master's in public health. So I've always been wrapped around healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. Even my sisters are all nurses. So, um, and of course, public health. I've always, you know, been wrapped around helping individuals, connecting them to resources in the community. So that led me into, you know, look. I was then looking for something that would allow me to give back and help individuals in the community. Then I found out about the diagnostic lab business. You know, it's really a very business that you can start without you needing too much to start with, you know. So that's how I got into having my own lab. I was able to find that resources on Facebook. I was on like, social media and I found out, oh, this is something that you could do. So, and I pursued it. And here we are today. I have my lab, um, Impact Diagnostics Lab and Health Services. And where is that located? In Maryland. We're oh. located in Maryland. Is that where you're doing your coaching as well? So yes, coaching is, um, well, that's where I'm looking at, but coaching is for all over the states. I have um, clients in all over the state, 50 states of America. So yes, but I'm um, looking at in Maryland. You talk a little bit about like the top 10 things that someone would need to start their own business. Top 10 things that you would need to start your business. So let's talk a little bit about coaching. Um, as you can all as you all know, I'm a coach, um, startup expert, if you will. I assist individuals, entrepreneurs that are looking to have and start their own diagnostic lab. So if you are considering in um if you're considering healthcare or having your own back um diagnostic lab. The top 10 things is, first of all, you will need to be certified um, for in order for you to do drug testing, especially for DOT, because DOT is regulated. We need to do um, this drug test per standards and the federal regulation. So the first and foremost is for you to have your DOT certification. All right. Then the second thing is then for you to start to look for a coach, because guess what? The industry is saturated not saturated, but you need to be specific in finding your own niche. So you would definitely need someone, a, a coach, to help you along the process, to help you get started. Then the third thing I would say is a location. Um, your location is very crucial, very critical in this industry. All right. You want to find a very great location. And you also want to, um, the fourth thing I'm going to probably would say is then start to narrow down your search uh, as far as services. You don't want to offer everything. You yeah. want to pick the best, all right? Because we have the tendency to offer all the services. I can, mm -hmm. I can, I can itemize all of that for you. But you want to, you know, streamline your services and pick a niche and offer the best, all right? We have DNA services. We have drug testing. Phlebotomy is one of them that we offer in the diagnostic lab. DNA is another one. IV infusion, background checks, fingerprints. We can go on and on. But you don't want to be a jack of all trade, but a master in one. All right. So strategize and streamline your services. Um, another thing that you do have to think about or start to think about is your account setup. We tend to collaborate more in this industry. We tend to reach out to labs for collaboration. So I am going to say that start to look for the lab that is going to take you. Critically, another one, the fifth one or the sixth is your business credit, guys. If you are looking to start in this industry, you want to work on your business credit. We've come to say that the labs are not joking these days. It's a lot of individuals that are reaching out to the labs without no credibility, without nothing to bring. So the labs are saying no to account new accounts and new business owners. They want you to at least be in business for a year. So the way that I do my mentorship is uh, when people reach out to me and they want to start their business, 
I try to, well, the first thing that we do and take care of is business credits, all right? Another thing that I would say is um, your marketing strategies. What are your plans when you have all of these things set up? What do you then want to do? How do you want to get clients? Very critical. We need to talk about finding clients, right? Not just clients and, you know, just the right client. And that's one of the benefits of my coaching because I help you streamline the best candidates, your best client. Who buys what you sell? Because in this industry, and again, we tend to offer a lot of services. It's yeah. not the same stroke for the same folks. You, If you have DNA services, your marketing strategy is different from drug testing strategy. All right? The way that you find DNA clients are different from how you find your drug testing client. It's different from how you find your phlebotomy clients. All right? So we have to think about all of those. Am I up to 10? Do I want to continue? No, I think that was great. I mean, I think you did way more than 10 and it just shows you how much that people need to think about when they're starting their business. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the items like getting supplies for retail location? A lot of people are trying to do it on their own. And it's like you already talked about, you know, if you don't know your customer, you don't know where to have your office, you don't even know if you can open the service in your location. So do you help people research if they can start a business in their state? That's the new thing that I'm going to begin to do because it's a lot of failure. Um, and mm -hmm. I have to be honest with you, people start and they want to back out. It's just so much lamentation in this industry. And that is because people are not guided to the right path. They don't, they don't, is either they're not guided the right way because there's a lot of people that are saying they're doing this or they just don't sit back and do the analysis. Someone like me, I'm a researcher. And I think I did mention that. My background is in public health and I'm an epidemiologist. So I am wrapped. I know everything about research. So what I do, even in my coaching, I try to do research. So back to your point. Yes, location is critical. So for retail, what I always recommend is make sure you're doing your study. Go to blocks down from the far right to your left right. See who has businesses in your area. Because when it comes to drug testing, 10 mile radius is critical. Someone from Indianapolis is not going to come to Maryland to drug test. But for DNA, it's possible. You can find a collection site and still service that client. But for drug testing, we tend to go by our location. So you want to strategically plant your business in a very lucrative um uh, location you want to be in a very good spot to get the right client yeah to actually make money in your business make money yeah because i mean that's what you're doing you're basically trying to get your clients to pay you for your services okay. and that's the bottom line so what do you think is going on do you think people are just like sitting around waiting they are waiting they are i'm glad you said that do you know why in this industry, we've been taught yes. to only do collection. We don't want to settle. We don't want to only do collection in this industry. And that's where I come in. And that's what sets my business apart, my coaching business or program apart. I don't always teach my students to only settle for collection. Although the terminology is DOT specimen collector, yes, you might, you, you should have collection as a one sort of, you know, revenue like, you know, multiple streams of income, like one stream of income, but you also want to learn how to fish. You don't want to settle for collection only. You want to be able to go and find clients. That's where we call AKA marketing, right? So speaking of real space, there is a client of mine. We were strategizing together, brainstorming together, and we came up and realized he actually has a police department right across from our office. So in turn, she had to go get a breath and alcohol training because those places those um the you know police department they always need um breath and alcohol testing you know that's one of the things that they do so it's really very in a favor to have their services that she can offer breath and alcohol services so that's one of the things that i always let people know before you sign up sign that lease or do anything you want to make sure you have the right location because that just gives you the checks for everything right location, the right time, the right person and all that. Yeah, well said. I'm trying to think, so do a lot of your uh, mentees become very successful or do you feel like you find people that might be really successful because they were um, in the right place and had the right motivation or they had the right support? And then what about those that may not have support around them, may not know anyone around them, 
um, maybe didn't, doesn't, don't have a lot of experience. So what's your advice? I mean, should the person first get some training under their belt and maybe get a group of friends or something to, to help support and, and grow their business? Yes. Um, your first question was, um, does my, um, uh, what is it called? Mentee have success? Yes. This program of mine has been tested and vetted. I've had majority, all right, of everybody that has passed through this program, they are all successful. And I can also proudly say that things that have been difficult for the normal, like the majority of the people, we've always had easy or accessibility to those. One of it is setting up a camp because when you want to do drug testing, the first thing that you want to do after you're certified as a collector, you want to set up an account. It's been successful because of the strategies that we adopt in the in the program. So yes, the mentorship has always been helpful to those that go through the mentorship, that have that have gone through the mentorship. It's been always been successful. And there is something that I call continuous support. I also have I also have a group whereby once you're done, even if you're not part of my, if you're not in my mentorship program, I have a support group on Facebook where anyone who is in this industry can join. They get to ask their questions, they get to network, you know, and for support and continuous growth in education. Yeah. And how would you measure success? Is success that they can do it full time? Is success a number? Is success, you know, the fact that maybe they can now spend more time with their kids? Success is all of those that you just mentioned. And that's exactly what I am doing today. I am successful because I get to spend time. I get, I'm able to hire a lab assistant to help me. I don't have to be working eight to nine. It allows me more time to coach, right? That's success. And we're seeing the revenue, right? Not even just the revenue, but profit. We have to remember even though you're making a certain X amount of money, what is your profit out of that? Because there is an investment that comes with your revenue, right? Are you getting profit? So all of these things are considered success to me. For me, those are all succession numbers, allowing you more time to, you know, spend time with your family. And I'm getting all of those, all right? So yeah, it is for me. All of those are success for me. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I think it's important that people say that, like what success is to them so that we don't confuse here what success might look like on the internet. <laughs> so now I'm curious to know a little bit more about um, the drug testing business in terms of the supplies. And um, is there reading that you give your mentees or is, uh, you know, do they have to set up supply accounts? Because it's, if you're doing it for phlebotomy and blood testing, you do need like supply accounts. And I think everybody tries to go to LabCorp because they can get some supplies for free or, you know, they try to like advertise this in a way where it's like free for all. Mm. Um, but as you already mentioned, you have to be certified. There's certain regulations that are involved for the state. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, what supplies are needed to get started? Do you think it's a little bit less or more? The good thing or the truthful thing is that it is a little bit less. It's on the lesser side mm. of drug testing. And the reason is because we are dealing with lab. If you are going to be sending specimens back to the lab, you have to get supplies from the lab. You cannot go on your out of your own way to get a cup that you want to get. You have that supply needs to come from the lab. However, there are diverse ways to do business and run your business. If what I just said applies to DOT. If you're doing DOT, the regulated test, it is considered a lab-based test, meaning your supplies comes from the lab. But you have to remember that it is now getting difficult to get in with these labs. Yeah. So coaching has taught us to adopt strategies to make it easier for us to get in with these labs. Now, when it comes to non-DOT, the non-federal regulated test, you would have to buy your own supplies. Those are the rapid cups, right? You would have to invest in those cups. And we have different panels. We have the five panel, we have the seven, the 10, up until 20. And it depends on what your client wants. You want to be able to offer all of those panels, okay? So 20 costs more than five panel, okay? So definitely you would have to put out something to get those cups. Those, those are not free. You would right. have to purchase it. Exactly. Yeah, and if you want any of the fancy needles, I mean, I've, I've heard of so many different requests. I don't think they would fulfill all of the requests that people want oh. out there 
No, even for if you want to do collection for this major vendors, such as Formfax and eScreen, you would need a touchscreen computer. You would need to invest in scanners mm -hmm. you, because you have to scan those barcodes. You have to have a touchscreen so that you or a, a signing pad. It's a, so yes, there is some up cost front that you would have to still put um, as far as supplies, your computer, your desk, your location your printer, your lockbox. When you're doing drug testing, we mm -hmm. need to put everything in a secure lockbox. You still have to buy a lockbox. You have to buy, um, what is this called? Signing pad. It's it's a lot of, yeah, you would need to have some binders because we keep policies and procedure. We have binders, your printer, you have to print out every time that you do drug test, you have to print a confirmation receipt. Mm -hmm. So you need to invest in a printer, ink, paper, copy papers, yes trays you need to sanitize your area gloves every you have to you have to wear gloves for yeah. protection. scrubs scrubs lab coats customized lab coats okay it's a lot yes those are the supplies that you would need right and then you and we already talked about like all the marketing that you'd have to do but you know the the business cards right you have Broker. to do your people Yes. And SEO, guys, let's talk a little bit about search engine optimization. If you really want to do well in this business, especially you need to have a good SEO because we, we do not only do drug tests for pre-employment. We also do drug tests for post-accident. Mm. Some things are random. Uh, return to duty. So if there is, and we know, we don't know when an accident is going to happen. It is an accident. So it's not planned. So when there is an accident in your area, these companies are going to search the nearest location you want to be on google so you have to spend money on search engine optimization so that when they search for services that you offer you will come up on the list all right so you would and you have to do it right seo is very important yeah so so and then just to add to that when she's mentioning about seo it's like having a website is a good a good start i know that a lot of people feel that maybe they just have social media or they just have their website they don't need both but then it's like you're missing customers that are on social media or that maybe are looking for your website when they look at your business cards or when they see your name, right? They're going to ask, what's your name? You know, how do we, how do we keep in touch? Um, you know, creating an email for yourself. Um, yeah, it, it requires a team. So how long would you say it took to set up your business at first? At first, honestly, it took me less than typical because again, I just, I do things as I'm a go-getter. I want to do it done. When I set my mind to do it, I want to get it. And it wasn't as difficult as it is back then. When we reach out to these labs, they immediately respond back and they start the process for us. So back then, it took me less than four weeks. I was able to set up my business in less than four weeks. Um, you know, by just, you know, first you have to register my LLC through your secretary of state. To get an EIN takes less than 10 minutes. Wow. Once the structures are set, you have your structure. Then you want to purchase an insurance. You need to insure your business. Then when you insure your business, you want to then take the specimen collector course. That course is three hours. Maximum three hours, you will be certified. Now, that's the first part. You would then have to come back and demonstrate competency. You could knock off those things in less than two days. Once that's done, you then start to set up account. You know, if it's for DNA, you have to reach out, you know, all of those accounts, same thing for free bottom. So yeah, typically it took me less than four days, but we've seen it range from, because some people, some remember location is not easy to find. I was able to, you know, some it's, it's hard. And we remember, we don't want to just rush into any building. We want to make sure it's the right fit. So nowadays with the lab taking their time and all that, I'm going to say typically it could be less than six weeks or six weeks, the maximum. Wow. And then I think you talked a little bit about the skill sets you need. So how would someone know that they would be good um, for doing this? Let's say they, they're they interested, they've been certified in other things, maybe medical assistant or EKG or um, phlebotomist, or, or maybe they're a nurse and now they're thinking about expanding their services. How do you know if someone has the right skill set for this business? You have the right skill set if you have human relationship, if you know how to care for people, if you know how to attend to people. It's not a rocket science. All you have to do is be certified. And DOT specimen collector is really honestly something that you can learn. So if you have the etiquette, the attitude, 
the ambition to do it, I think it's possible to do it. There is no limitation. All right. right good bedside manner. Yeah. Good bedside manner. And again, it's everything. And you could learn all of these things. It's there. It, we can teach people how to do it. What you, those are the things that you need, you need to bring on board. All right. If you want to bedside manner, all those little etiquette. Yeah. They're all things. So even if you're a background, I've seen a lot of clients that they are not even, their background is not even in healthcare and they want to pursue this. Remember, we have people from the fingerprint world. They're not in the healthcare. But we've come to see that we could combine fingerprint with other services that we offer here. So it's combination of everything. We've had people from all spheres of lives that do not necessarily have to have a healthcare background. Yeah. Right? Isn't that amazing? But it now, is. do you get a lot of messages or emails or people asking for help or people that might not even be in healthcare? Yes, I started with yesterday. Some girl reached out to me. She was interested in just doing DNA. You know, you could only, you don't have to do all this combination of fingerprint, phlebotomy, drug testing. It could just be DNA. That's the beautiful part of this. It's, and we still consider the lab business, right? Because as long as we're collecting human specimen for diagnosis and confirmations and treatment, it's still considered diagnostic and lab. So DNA, what we have to do is obtain buckle swabs like the oral mouth swabs and to do, and that's one sort of specimen right that's human specimen so she was just interested in dna right we have some people that are already established in fingerprints for years and they begin to see that oh because remember we do fingerprints for pre-employment right we need to background check people to make sure that they don't have any criminal records before they can get a new job right it's typical and they begin to say that oh drug testing is a thing okay then they also need so they want to now are they are not interested in the drug testing piece of this so again it's anywhere that you're coming from your background fits and as long as you're taking the qualification and the required examination to qualify you how long does it take to get the dot certification is that like classes and on-site work Yes, we have on-site work, but these days COVID has taught us that we could do everything from home remotely, right? So a lot of you will still find some people that are like, I am hands on, I don't I don't really do too well behind screen. I would like to come to you to take my test, which that's the most preferred way because you would then definitely have a feel of how to do your split collection. Because in DOT, we do splits. We have to do split collection right because that's the regulation so typically cfr 49 part 40 is the regulation that is dot so if you're interested you can go and google and search and read more about the cfr 4940 but my course when i made my content it's three hours long and all of my students that took that course we they are successful they are able to do dot testing for a regulation so i would say three hours wow that's amazing it is you mentioned you had some people working with you. What kind of experience do they have? Do they have skill sets that are different from yours? Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Phlebotomy. I don't draw blood. I'm not a phlebotomist. Mm -hmm. I have zero background knowledge in blood draw, but I offer the services. So what I did in turn, my lab assistants, I made sure that they have experience and they know how to draw blood. So they could help me with the, the phlebotomy part of the um, business because I offer blood draw services as well because we have contract with nursing home and we also do lead testing. Um, that's one of the new contracts that we just acquired from the Maryland Physician Care. It's um, a insurance care. So yeah, we have to obtain some sort of blood specimen and I am not, you know, I'm not a phlebotomist. So yeah, my staff member have that qualification and we're able to offer that. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask that because I had a feeling you had other people on your team that have other skill sets, and that's so important to grow your team. So you're hiring people who can do other things maybe better than you, maybe they just have more time than you do, and they can do the work for you, which is which is part of growing a business. Um, you're scaling the talent, you're scaling the services you have, because if not, then you probably can't do all of your services. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how did you know that it was time for you to start hiring? 
Oh, immediately. So again, I don't know if I mentioned that I am a mom of two little boys, three and four year old. My babies are really, really that small. Oh. So I know right off the bat that they need mommy than anything else. And I don't want to deprive my children because I have a business. Mm -hmm. So I have to find help to so what I sometimes I go to the lab um, but I have a full-time staff so because sometimes we have to go in and do training offer time and all that but offer assistance and training but yes full-time standby staff is taking care of the business and I so that allows me to have my mommy time with my kids because when they go to school it's half day before you know it there I have to go pick them up I have to go back to mommy mode so yeah that alone my due to the nature of you know the, because I'm a mom I know that I need help right away yeah. yeah see that that's amazing and you did it though I think that that's that's a real skill to lead other people and to like write out you know maybe instructions of like this is what I need you to do and then follow up and did you ever have any times where you felt that um you had to take maybe a leadership training or you had to learn how to basically be a boss? Well, yes. For uh, In order for me to train people, I had to take the train the trainer course. I need to be certified. Although DOT is telling us that if you have been doing drug tests for about a year, it's okay for you to go ahead and train people or you take the trainer trainer course. So I went that route. I took the trainer trainer course. So I had to take that course in order for me to be able to train others. So that's one thing. And like I said, my background is in um, epidemiology. We've always been taught, um, we've taken a lot of leadership courses because I was the case manager and I supervised, um, you know, my, what are they called? Um, navigators right because we navigate and we go into um community to help so yes courses we cannot go wrong with it because we have to develop ourselves every day and night especially when you're giving back to people you have to go and recruit you know as a coach or as a trainer or what have you you know you have to continually have to educate yourself so that you can bring the best to your clients yeah I guess my last question for you is, is there anything that we can do to help you? Anybody listening that can help you? Is there anybody, anything? I need help. Who doesn't need help? So yeah, I mean, help as far as, how do you help me? Um, promote this word. If you're watching me and you enjoyed this and you know someone that needs um, or wants to start their business and they've been looking and they don't have the right answers, I feel like I can help them. So I'm going to, you're going to help me by helping share this word to the right audiences and we would help each other. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach Eva. You're amazing. Um, I think that this has been incredible. I think informative and anybody who really enjoyed it will definitely um, learn more about you and reach out because I'm going to put everything down below the video so that people can take a look at it. And if you're listening to it, just jump on the YouTube channel you know, subscribe to learn more about experts like Elizabeth. She's incredible and she has a lot of knowledge. So I, I really encourage you guys to just go look at her stuff, look at her content. Um, she's been in this field, she's in healthcare and, you know, those are the types of people that you want, you know, to support you if you're interested in building a business like this. I am. I'm looking out for nurses. I think I should mention that nurses. I like them because they just, you know, I'm 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 looking for some specificity in my business, my client as well. I mm -hmm. want you to be able to bring something on board because you have to help me to help you. If you don't have a lot of things, how am I going to build on what you have? So yes, my nurses. Um, like um, NSA said, I have video YouTube's free of you know youtube university i've dropped a lot of content i also operate a free group on facebook y'all can join my mentorship program you can add to my website to learn more about all of my trainings and all that so yes definitely Hennessy. all right thank you elizabeth i'll let you go um it's been a pleasure and i hope to keep connected with you and just keep working and learning more about you thank you so much for having me